AP Macro FRQ number three. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, T accounts, right? T accounts. Tricky, tricky, always. Uh, assume that the reserve requirement is 20% and the bank holds no excess reserves. Now, this, for some reason, confuses people. It just implies that when we start out, there are no monies in excess reserves. Now, Kim will deposit $100 of cash. Remember, liabilities on the right, assets on the left. Uh, it doesn't tell us the name of the bank. $100 goes into what we call checkable deposits. Make sure you understand that could also be called demand deposits. Right? Both of those are the same thing. $100 in a checkable deposits. Do we know? We know our RRR is 20%. So 20% of that has to go, of the whatever goes into checkable deposits has to go in what we call required reserves. So 20 bucks would go into required reserves and then the rest would flow into what we call excess reserves. So $80 there. The maximum dollar amount this bank can lend out, it can lend out anything it has in excess reserves, so 80 bucks. The total change in demand deposits in the banking system, easiest way to do that is just know it's the $100 times your money multiplier. Your money multiplier is 1 over the 20% or 1 over 0.2, or we could just say it's 5, right? How many times does 20 cent go into a dollar? Five times. So 5 is our money multiplier. We could see our demand deposits over the whole banking system would be 500 bucks. Maximum change in the money supply, that is whatever's loaned out, the $80 times the money multiplier, which would give us $400. Bucks. Uh, assume the Federal Reserve buys $5 million in government bonds on the open market. As a result of the open market purchase, calculate the maximum increase in the money supply in the banking system. Recognize that when they're talking about what's going to give us the maximum increase in the money supply, they're implying that we have to just know. They're implying that banks have that whole $5 million in bonds. So if this bank has $5 million in bonds, and the Federal Reserve purchases those $5 million in bonds on the open market, all of that $5 million would go into excess reserves. Obviously, the bond category would drop down to zero. Now we have $5 million in excess reserves. Understand that this bank owned those bonds. It does not have to, and neither would it ever, put it into checkable or demand deposits. It would not owe it to itself. It already owns the bonds. So when the bonds are sold to the Fed, all that $5 million would flow into excess reserves, and then that $5 million could be loaned out times our money multiplier, which would give us $25 million maximum increase uh, in the money supply. Um, all right, given the increase in the money supply, what happens to real wages in the, par in the short run? So um, what we know is that when the Fed buys bonds, that's expansionary. Right? We know that the money supply is going to increase. This is going to make nominal interest rates go down. This is going to make investment go up. This makes aggregate demand go up. That makes price level go up. That makes real GDP go up. That makes output go up. And that would make unemployment go down. This is our causal chain of thinking for monetary expansionary policy, usually to get us out of a recession. They're just asking about real wages. All we have to know with real numbers is what's going on with the price level. If your price level is going up, your real wage has to be falling. They want us to explain. So we would say that uh, as um, price levels increase, uh, the real wage falls as people's purchasing power has decreased. College Board loves the word purchasing power. So understand this. Your real wage shows what you can actually put in your grocery cart. So if the price of everything goes up, you can put less and less in your grocery cart. Your, way, your nominal wage 
which is the wage you actually get paid, might not have changed at all. But when the price level goes up, you can buy less stuff. Therefore, your real wage, what you can really buy, has absolutely decreased. Um, all right, guys. Thanks. Bye.